Today we're going to show an example assembly of a multi-plate pipe arch with a 2.24 meter span by 1.63 meter rise. This structure is using modern style plate with four foot wide rings. Each ring is made from four plates, 5N invert bottom plate, two 5N corner plates, one on each side, and an 11N crown plate on the top. The size of the plate is identified by the number of bolt hole spacings. Each bolt hole spacing is called an N. For example, this picture shows a 5N plate, which you can determine by counting the five bolt hole spaces. One, two, three, four, five. These holes are located on the circumferential seam, curved part of the plate, that goes around the perimeter. The other joint is called the longitudinal seam which is identified by the staggered holes located in alternating peaks along the length of the structure. When starting assembly, it's important for the first plate to be placed in the correct orientation. This is determined by location of the master corner hole. The master corner hole is the bolt hole located on the circumferential seam that is closest to the edge of steel when viewed from the outside. The correct location of the master corner hole is identified on the assembly drawings provided with each structure. The drawings which are provided with all structures show the plate sizes, locations, and correct overlaps that are required for proper assembly. Spring clips can be used to help install the bolts on the invert of the structure, structures with plates on the bottom, such as this pipe arch. The bolts are placed through the hole from the bottom of the plate, so the head is on the soil side of the structure, and the spring clip is installed over the bolt on the other side of the plate to hold the bolt in place. The next invert plate can be placed on the first plate by overlapping one corrugation profile. The bolts installed with the spring clips allow the next plate to be put into place without the bolts falling out. Now you can see how the spring clips help hold the invert bolts in place since you don't have easy access to the underside of the plate to install the bolts once the next plate is on. Now note, there are other methods to install the invert bolts without using spring clips that the assembly contractor may choose to use. Pry bars and drift pins may be used to make sure the holes are lined up perfectly before installing the nuts and bolts loosely. The nuts have one face that is tapered, curved, and the other face is flat. It's important to install the nut with the correct orientation. The curved face of the nut goes against the corrugated plate, peak and valley and the flat side of the nut goes against flat steel, such as the base channel for an open bottom arch structure. The nuts can be installed on the inside or outside of the structure. The typical guideline is to install the nuts on the inside for the bottom of the structure and on the outside for the top of the structure. When torquing the nut and bolt assembly, the impact gun must be placed on the nut for tightening. Therefore, install the nut on the side that provides easy access for torquing the nuts tight in the final step. The tapered face of the nut helps pull the plates together by seating in the hole similar to a lug nut on the wheel of a car. Also, the tapered face fits into the valley corrugations allowing the assembly to be tightened without damaging the plate. When the invert is complete, it is time to start installing the corner plates. Now, it's important to follow the assembly drawings that show how the plates are put together and the correct overlaps. There are two rules that must be followed for a correct assembly. Rule number one, the structure cannot have four plates meeting at any location. The picture on the left shows how three plates are meeting the joint, two plates on the invert, and one plate on the side. Rule number two, for the longitudinal joint, the hole in the valley is located closest to the visible edge must be maintained. The picture in the center shows how the bolt hole in the valley is close to the edge of steel that you can see, and the hole on the peak is further away from the edge of steel that you can see. The rule about hole in the valley is located closest to the visible edge can be difficult to see at first. So for example, the middle picture shows the wrong plate overlap. By installing this plate on the other side, you can see that the hole in the valley is farther away from the visible edge of steel, and the hole on the peak is closer to the visible edge. Now, even though all the holes line up, this seam is wrong because the rule hole in the valley is located closest to the visible edge has not been achieved. By moving the plate to the other side as seen in the picture on the right, now the same plate joint will meet the requirement of hole in the valley is located closest to the visible edge for the longitudinal joints. The correct plate overlap is important for the intended performance of the structure. 
when longitudinal joints are lapped correctly, the hole in the valley will be closest to the visible edge of the plate. Continue on with assembly of the plates in accordance with the shop drawings. It's best practice to install all the bolts and nuts loosely as each plate is being installed. Once three or four full rings have been assembled, then you can begin tightening the nuts to the torque requirement listed on the drawings. Keeping three or four rings loose will help with keeping the structure flexible enough to help with aligning holes when new plates are being installed. For tightening the nuts, a one and one quarter inch diameter socket will be used on an impact gun. The size of the impact gun and air compressor will depend on the size of the structure and thickness of plate that is being assembled. The most efficient way to get the job done the fastest is to use a one inch drive impact gun with a minimum 180 CFM compressor, the type you tow behind a truck. Now, sometimes small equipment can be used, but it will take longer to tighten all the nuts. All the bolts need to be torqued to minimum 150 foot pounds and a maximum of 250 foot pounds. It's important to not over torque the nuts. Once the structure is complete, a minimum of 10% of nuts should be checked to make sure the torque spec is met. Also, the geometry of the structure, the span and rise should be measured to make sure the structure is within the tolerance specified on the assembly drawings. Okay, now that the structure is assembled, it's important to conduct an inspection to ensure everything is correct before backfilling. The inspection should include, but not be limited to, all the plates are in the correct location. The longitudinal seam joints are overlapped correctly to ensure the hole in valley is closest to the visible edge. There are a maximum of three plates meeting at any one location. All the bolt and nut assemblies are installed in the overlapping plates. The nuts are torqued within the specified range. The geometry of the structure is within the specified tolerance. 